Hello my loves, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. It is Wednesday, we're starting this one a little bit late, but I do already have updates for you because I have started reading Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. This one I'm reading for Witchlands Along, which is hosted by Jada over at Jada Ray Reads. And I'm actually unsure about this one. I'm very intrigued to see if I actually end up liking it or not because this one is a YA fantasy which I have been vaguely interested in for a while but I haven't like fully committed and if it wasn't for this read along I don't think I ever would have actually picked it up and read it as a priority but I am intrigued because Jade loves it. So this one follows two witches who are trying to stay in hiding because one of them, Safi, she is a truth witch which means that she can tell when people are lying and that could be used as a very powerful political tool and there's only her that has this power. So she's trying to stay hidden because she doesn't want to be used as a tool, forced to work with people. I do think they do a pretty bad job though and get caught at some point. I'm not too sure but I am very intrigued to find out and I am 50 pages in. So I haven't read too much so far but I do have thoughts already because you can definitely tell this is a YA book, a young adult book, which isn't a negative thing, that is what it is and you know it fits the age range it's going for. Editing Ashley here to jump in and interrupt because I thought I mentioned a change in this thought later in the video but I didn't. So everything I'm saying about this being a YA book, just like ignore me because I'm not sure what the actual situation is. So the thoughts that I've just said, I said during a live stream. Everything I just said about this book being a YA fantasy, apparently it's not, or it wasn't intended to be. So I believe the author wrote this as an adult fantasy and then it's just been sold by certain publishers or like depend on the location, it has been sold as a young adult book. Now I see it as very distinctly young adult. So it actually, like I am shaken to the core to hear that it was intended to be an adult book because I just don't see that at all in the narrative voice. Like it just sounds young to me. Not overly young, just teenage young. So just to, just to jump in and change the perspective on that a little bit because I don't want people to comment being like, oh, it's not young adult when like <laughs> it both is and isn't. Like <laughs> I can't figure it out. I can't compute that information, but it changes everything I've just said, so enjoy. <laughs> but what I mean by that is the narrational style is in third person perspective and even though that's somewhat disconnected from the characters, it actually does take on traits from the character's dialogue within the third person narrative. So it reads younger because the characters themselves are younger and so like it makes sense but I'm not quite sure what I think of it so far because it is so obvious to me. You are definitely thrown straight into the action with this one. The first 50 pages are just like pure run 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 gotta get away from people and I do definitely like how you can tell that the main two characters are a unit, how they work together, how they come as a pair. You can tell that right from the offset and I think that is really impressive. I am intrigued to see how they build up as individual characters as well. So yeah so far I'm intrigued and I will be reading more of this during the sprints today so I should have more reading updates after I am done with those but so far we're off to an interesting start. I do have some book mail but I will show you that tomorrow because I do have reading sprints happening in just under an hour and I do need to have some food so I will be hurrying on up with that. I'm doing some Patreon sprints with Maddie, Becca and Jade. I also have some happening tomorrow and then I also have my Patreon monthly live show for the Frolic and Fiend tier on Friday so I've got live shows back to back to back to back. I feel like that's a good thing because after Bacoplathon I am feeling pretty slumpy with the reading. Too much reading in one weekend. <laughs> so I need the motivation to get back up and reading again, especially because ideally I would like to have Truth Witch finished this week. Whether that will happen or not, I have no idea, but stay tuned to find out. Hello my loves, we have awful lighting right now, but it is now Thursday. I'm about to jump on and do Patreon reading sprints with Steph and Jade. I feel like reading a book, which isn't on my March TBR, which is an awful idea, but I am bored. <laughs> Um, I'm not bored, like I'm just, hang on, let me sit down. Okay, that'll do. Yes, I want to read something, which isn't fantasy, basically. I want something, I want something that's quick. I want something kind of thrillery, I guess. I don't know, I just want something that's different to what I usually read. So I'm now just sat on the floor in front of my shelves, like what do I read? <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is read the back of some of the ones that I'm like leaning towards at the minute and I might get the people to choose in the reading sprints because I'm awful at decisions unless there's one which really grabs me when I read the synopsis. 
But I thought I'd take you through the process of picking out a few, I guess. So, one which I have been leaning towards at the minute is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. All I remember is it's crime related and I'm really into crime stuff. This one being a YA mystery, I guess. So on the back of this one says, the case is closed. Five years ago, a schoolgirl, Andy Bell, was murdered. The police knew who did it. Everyone in town knows who did it. But having grown up in the same small town that was consumed by murder, Pippa isn't so sure. When she chooses the case as a topic for her final year project, she starts to uncover secrets that someone in town desperately wants to stay hidden. And if the real killer is still out there, how far will they go to keep Pip from the truth? So, crime, mystery, thing. One which I really, really, really do want to read, but I think this is just going to be too much for my brain at the minute because my brain is just like, no. But one which I am really intrigued about is Night Film, but it is a pretty big one, so I don't know if I'll be doing this one right now. I do really want to read it. <laughs> we'll take it as an option. Also, possibly, it's not quite thriller, this is more on the horror side of things, but possibly My Best Friend's Exorcism, which I've been meaning to read for ages. So, it's about a girl who is possessed, her friend tries to get rid of it. <laughs> as much as I know. Not fancy and contemporary at the minute. Okay, so we're gonna take these three options in and I will let you know which one is chosen. I do also have Black Chalk, which is pretty small, but I feel like this is going to be on the side of Dark Academia, which is a bit too pretentious for what my brain wants right now. Nah, not that one, put it back. Sticking with the three options, I will also update you on Truthwitch because I'm now 100 pages in. So bear with me a second and I shall be back to tell you more. <laughs> I'm now on the live show and it has been decided that I will be starting A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which out of the three I chose seemed to be the one that fit most clearly with what I was after, so I'm hoping I love this. So many people in the comments were saying that this one is incredible, so I'm hoping that I end up agreeing. So I am going to start sprinting, but first of all, where's Truthwitch? <laughs> I don't know where the book is, but I did get 100 pages into Truthwitch, and at the minute, I'm not loving it, I'm not disliking it either, so I just, I can't say I'm too gripped yet, because I just don't understand why characters are doing what they're doing. Like there's certain, situations that are coming up and they're overreacting to such an extreme and not just going along with what should happen. Inevitably getting themselves into all sorts of trouble. But I don't understand why, like instead of going from A to B, we're going from A to C and just jumping over the reasoning. It seems really disjointed because there's clearly information that we're just skipping over or I don't know, but I have heard that that is a fairly common thing for people to say, that the first part of the book just seems a little bit like mismatched? I don't know. But I will say that the two most recent chapters picked up a little bit. I think now because I'm getting to know the characters a bit more, I am becoming slowly more invested. I'm just hoping to become even more invested over the next few chapters because at the minute I'm like, okay. <laughs> but yes, I'm going to go and do some reading sprints and I shall check back in later this evening. Google, play the Perks of Being a Wallflower soundtrack. Got it. Here's a Spotify playlist called The Perks of Being a Wallflower Soundtrack OST. It is Saturday morning and I am here to do a reading update and also a mini haul because 
quick mail. First of all, I wanted to let you know that during the reading sprints the other day I managed to get 100 pages into A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and I am really intrigued so far. I think this is a really fun one in the sense that there is a literal mystery that you're trying to figure out. I can't remember if I've told you what this is about. One thing that is surprising me is that I'm finding this funnier than I expected because with it being based around teenagers, the dialogue in this is like really sarcastic humour and I just... I love that kind of thing. I'm also finding it funny because the main character just does really stupid things or like things that she's told specifically not to do. For instance, within the first like two pages, you see that she's told not to contact the family members of those involved and she just goes and immediately does that. <laughs> I'm intrigued to see how this plays out because while she is doing this investigation of sorts, I imagine at some point she's going to be told off for it and her ways of going about things because she's not going about it in the most ethical of ways. She could potentially be in a lot of trouble with how she's doing it, so I'm intrigued to see if that's going to be a thing. I imagine it will be just because it is like a school project situation and you do tend to have to fill out like ethical forms and almost review your own process so her process is just like a disaster for a school project but it's working she's getting places i'm also intrigued because there are more and more people getting involved at the point that we're at there are a lot of loose ends she's discovered more information and she's discovered more things to look at but it means that we have more questions and answers so i'm very intrigued and it is a very quick read i'm hoping to return to this at some point today but i am going to be focusing on truth witch today so my plan right now after this vlog update is to go for a short walk possibly film some tiktoks <laughs> I just feel like making something today. I might take some photos, I don't know, do stuff for Instagram and then do some reading. I don't really want to actually do any work today, <laughs> which is valid in most people's terms because it's a weekend, but I should probably start editing this vlog and stuff. So we'll see, we'll see. I might just take it as the day comes. But to show you some mail I got, I am very excited. First, because something unexpected arrived and I can't wait to see it. So I have actually taken it out of the envelope because I didn't know what it was. When I opened it I discovered a note inside saying for Ashley and discovered this is from Ryan. Ryan runs a small business over at Ryan Connolly Art. It's on Etsy and he does bookish canvases, prints and also just like general quotes and stuff so I believe he does quotes from popular songs and stuff. It seems he has sent me one so like I said haven't opened this don't know what don't know what it is but let's find out. Ooh. Ah, I <laughs> I had a suspicion, I had a suspicion. So this says, oh, <laughs> this says knowledge is dangerous. And look at the colors of that. This is a quote which is actually said in the bone season. I believe the full thing is something like knowledge is dangerous. Once you know it, you carry it with you always. It is a quote which is said in many different things as well, but that's what I associate it with because of course I do as the bone season. I love this also random observation, it feels really nice. <laughs> but here is a close-up of the canvas. If you can see it is actually glittery and I love this kind of like marbling effect that goes on with the colours. Oh, I can put it on my wall. Like, I mean obviously it's going to be smaller than that when it's actually to scale but it fits in with my wall. <laughs> I'm just sat here feeling it. I need to stop. <laughs> It should be pretty easy to hang as well because of the the actual canvas thing. So yes, thank you so much Ryan for this. I really like it. Also it smells really good. I'm leaving the weirdest review of this. <laughs> Can you imagine if I just went on his Etsy like, it smelled really good. <laughs> no, but I do love this. I really, really do. Thank you so much Ryan for making this for me. I will hang it with pride on my wall. And of course I will leave a link to Ryan's Etsy store down in the description box if you want to go and check it out. He has loads of different things, they don't just look like this. And there are tons of books, songs, everything like that, so I would highly recommend going and taking a look. I just downed a huge vat of coffee because it was going cold. So if I just start vibrating all of a sudden, caffeine. I have received a couple of books from publishers and both of them I'm so excited about because this is like solid book mail. I mean all book mail is solid book mail but you know what I mean. The first one, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen already because the folks over at Harper Voyager very kindly sent me the illustrated edition of The Hobbit. They were celebrating, I think it's called Read Tolkien, Reading Tolkien Day? Tolkien Reading Day? 
I can't remember which way around it goes, I'll put the hashtag here, but apparently this is a thing that happens every year and they emailed me asking if I would like to receive a copy of The Illustrated Hobbit and I'm not going to decline that. This is beautiful. It really, really is. And then on the back we have the dragon. So this is illustrated by Alan Lee, which I believe he's also done editions of The Lord of the Rings. The hardcover underneath is this beautiful shade of green. We have the map printed on the end papers. And then we do have illustrations all the way through, which are just absolutely beautiful. And I'm really glad to have this actually. I think there are so many beautiful editions of this series in particular, or of this author rather, so The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. There is also actually an illustrated edition of The Silmarillion now, which I'm intrigued about because I haven't read that one yet, but I believe that one's more like heavy world building. I'm very intrigued to read that at some point, And I do actually want to see the illustrated editions of The Lord of the Rings now to match this one. But these are just beautiful. I think they have this kind of almost toned back style to them in that they're not overly saturated they do have this kind of comfort theme in the watercolors and it's just beautiful so once again thank you so much to the folks over at Harper Voyager for sending this one my way and then I do also have another really exciting book which is An Arc of Ariadne by Jennifer Sane. So I requested this one a while ago and it was in my most anticipated releases of 2021 video. And then Caitlin, who works for the publisher, got in touch last week, I think it was, and was just like, did I ever send you that book? Because I was meant to send you that book. And she hadn't, so she did. And now I have it and I'm so excited about it because Greek myth retelling, I am so excited! It's a retelling of Ariadne's story which is part of the thesis in the Minosaur story. The quote on the back says that my story would not be one of death and suffering and sacrifice. I would take my place in the songs that would be sung about Theseus, the princess who saved him and ended the monstrosity that blighted Crete. I'm just so excited. This is one I've been so eagerly anticipating for so long, literally since it was announced. So I am going to be getting to this as soon as possible. It comes out in April, so you don't have that long to wait if you are interested in this one. But yes, very, very, very excited. And thank you once again to Caitlin for sending me this. So with that being said, I am going to head out and go on my walk and I shall check back in with you later today. <laughs> so often I am prone to random whims that happen most often late at night. And so one thing that I love about living by myself is that I can act upon these random whims. And so today I found myself doing Zumba at 11pm and then promptly following it with covering my entire head of hair in clay for a hair mask. <laughs> This wasn't just any old clay, this was the Aztec healing clay which you may have seen around if you're into beauty stuff, it's quite well known for being used as a natural face mask, although if you do use it as a face mask it is very strong but I love it because it literally feels like it's pulling every single insecurity out of your pores. But I've seen a lot of people use it as a hair mask because it can help promote curls coming back. Now I was kind of dubious because I know how hard this is to get off your face so I couldn't imagine it going too well when it's literally in your hair and obviously your hair goes rock hard when it's got dry clay in it. But I tried it because I have used it before and I know that it's worked wonders on my skin, so I looked into it, made sure there weren't any like horror stories of hair loss or anything and decided to try it out. And surprisingly, it wasn't that difficult to get out of my hair. Now I don't feel like I got every single piece of it out in terms of my hair feels really thick the next day, but it does feel incredibly soft and it is a lot curlier. You'll see in the next clip, but 
yeah, this was this was how I spent this night. It was very random. <laughs> and now we're on to Sunday evening with the said curly hair. It's definitely improved. Um, and I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. So I'm glad that I tried that because now I know what to do every so often if my hair is feeling a little bit dead. <laughs> but yesterday I managed to read up to, I think, 200 pages into Truth Witch and I'm starting to enjoy it a lot more now. Not in terms of me being eager to rush back to it or anything, like I still have to tell myself to read it, but I don't want to DNF it now. <laughs> I don't want to DNF it, I don't want to just put it down the second I pick it up because I am actually quite intrigued about how all of these characters and their storylines are coming together. I find Merrick hilarious because he's just angry all the time. He's so done with everything. He doesn't want anything to do with anybody, but he just keeps ending up in situations that make his rage come out and I find it hilarious. I do still think there are a lot of inconsistencies and, you know, jumping around within the story, but I think that's bound to come together a lot better as we go through the story because things are gonna have to be tied together a bit more. So I'm hopeful that this one will take a turn as I continue through the second half of the book. I will hopefully finish this before March ends, which only gives me a couple of days, but it shouldn't take too long. I haven't read anything else of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder because I do now want to focus on Truth Witch to finish that off before my wrap up happens, but we shall see how that goes. But I did just want to give you a little bit of an update on how the tables are slowly turning, hopefully, it will continue that way and just get better and better as we go because I really do want to remain one of the hosts of Witchlands Along. So yeah, we shall see how it goes. I have not done any reading today, which is a shame. I will probably do a little bit before I go to sleep, but maybe of my non-fiction book, so I'm still reading I'll Be Gone in the Dark, barely through it at all. But you know, with that one, I'm just kind of picking up, reading a few pages and putting back down again. So I may read that one before I go to sleep. Today has mainly been just filming. So I have filmed two videos, one of which had over 70 books in it. So that took a while and I still need to put the books back on my shelves, but I think that's a job for tomorrow. And then I had a video chat with Emma. So Emma, her channel is something like Emmy. I always feel weird saying it because it's not like a a branded name or anything. So I will of course leave a link to it down below. I adore her channel and just everything about her so much. She's my friend, so of course I do. But if you like dark academia aesthetics, definitely go to Emma's channel. If you love anything cozy, if you love like really intensive reviews and thoughts and in-depth commentary on books, then Emma Jigal. So I'll leave a link to her channel down below. But we had a video chat because we've been meaning to catch up for a very, very long time. And I just, my cheeks were hurting by the end because I was just smiling all the way through and it was really lovely to see her. So that was great. And now I'm just about to settle down and edit this vlog. So really not that much to talk about today. I went for a walk. That's pretty much it. So I think I am actually just going to wrap up this video here. But before I do, I just want to give you a heads up that next week's vlog we will be undertaking a challenge. We are taking on a reset challenge, which I'm not going to go into the details of it now because I will save that for when it's actually happening, but I am on a mission to change things and to actually do all the things that I've been saying I'm going to do for about a year now. So I'm gonna reset my life, <laughs> which sounds probably a lot more dramatic than it is, but challenge accepted. You will be seeing it in the next vlog. So with that being said, I will just wrap up this video here. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on anything that I've mentioned through the video, whether it be the books, whatever else I've mentioned. I really cannot remember what else has happened this week, but yes, so let me know your thoughts. And for now, I shall leave you to the rest of your day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to all the books I've mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you have a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.